It's Sunday, so it's time to take another look at the Yodobashi Top 10 camera sales for the past couple of weeks. Once again, Sony dominates the podium, but Canon does make a solid appearance with a surprise camera. But what about the Panasonic S5 Mark II? Does it still show up on the list? Or what about Nikon or Fuji? Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated, it means an awful lot to me, but more importantly, it really does help this channel grow. Yodobashi Camera is Japan's fourth largest camera store with 23 retail outlets. They publish their sales data every two weeks, giving us a glimpse into the Japanese market and something to talk about in an otherwise quiet Sunday. Take a wild guess at which camera shows up in the number one spot. You're not going to need much time. It's been in the number one spot for, well, most of the last year. In fact, since it was, well, started shipping back in December of 2021, the Sony a7 IV has been the number one selling camera in the top 10, mostly in the top three. Quite often with two different product SKUs, the a7 IV is just an incredible camera at $24.99. It's just in high demand. People just love that camera. It performs very, very well. But the Sony a7R5 comes in second, delivering 61 megapixels and 8K video at 24 frames per second. The Sony a7R5 is the first mirrorless camera to have a dedicated AI chip. And in a time where everybody's talking about AI, they have their own AI systems like ChatGPT, all the major technology companies are producing, well, AI products. It, it's in the race to be the first with the most capable AI system. But Sony is the first camera company to have a dedicated AI chip. They're certainly not the first camera company to have AI in their cameras. Canon with the 1DX Mark III has deep learning in that camera, but it's not as a dedicated custom chip. This is the first camera company to have a dedicated custom chip. And I'll be curious to see if Canon follows in future cameras or the other camera companies like Nikon, Panasonic, or Fuji, if they end up having dedicated AI chips. The Canon EOS R6 Mark II makes an appearance in third place showing us that Canon can once again get units out the door, but are they off the apology list? Well, no, not at this point, but it's also a weekend, and it's a holiday weekend worldwide, but um, we'll be keeping an eye on that list to see if the R6 Mark II falls off. But the R6 Mark II selling at the exact same price as the R6 Mark I, at least in US dollars. The Mark II fixed a lot of problems with the Mark I, specifically all the video modes that the camera is able to record unlimited, at least in the basic frame rates of 4K, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, but does come up against a wall of around 40 or 50 minutes if you're shooting 4K 60. But we also get false colors and a few other, well, enhancements and capabilities. And of course, the camera can shoot at an astonishing 40 frames per second. And in fourth place, we have our surprise Canon camera, the Canon EOS R50, which has been announced back in January. And this camera, well, it surprises. Not because it's an affordable camera selling for under $700, it's because it's really one of the first cameras along with the R8 that is largely cripple free in terms of its capabilities. We're not seeing overly cropped 4K video. We're not seeing all sorts of other strange capabilities. Now this camera is segmented, so I'm not trying to tell you that it's the best camera out there, but for a camera price at under $700, it does perform very well, rather well indeed. However, if you are looking at this camera, you should also take a look at the Sony, ZV E10 because that's also an excellent vlogging camera and I really love what Sony does with their well exposure when you're focusing on something like a subject the camera will automatically expose for the subject and I think that's a really nice handy feature I really do hope we start to see that in other camera models the Nikon Z9 a couple of years after its release is still doing well in fifth place but let's face it, the Nikon camera that we want to see in the Yodobashi Top 10 is not the Z9, and I'm not knocking the Z9, just bear with me, Nikon customers. It's the Nikon Z8. Come on, we all want to see the Nikon Z8. We want to hear it being announced. We want to see it shipping. We want it in our hands, and we want to see it on the Top 10. And I wouldn't be surprised if once this camera is announced, that it does show up in the Top 3. The, the Nikon Z8 is one of those cameras that we've been waiting for for a long time. Since Canon released the Canon EOS R5, many of us thought, okay, where's Nikon's answer to this camera? And we've waited almost three long years. And then Sony announced the A7R5, and yet still, where's the Nikon Z8? Well, there are grumblings of this camera. According to Nikon rumors, we can expect an announcement in the next couple of weeks to, the, well, the beginning of May. And if you follow an article I just put out, well, not really an article, a video I put out just a few hours ago, well, it looks like Nikon Germany made a mistake indicating that they have a 10th product, a 10th mirrorless product. 
And that product's name, well, they don't shed any information on that. It's only Nike on Germany that had this mistake showing 10 products when there were only nine products. So we all know them. The Nikon Z9, the Z6 Mark 1 and 2, Z7 Mark 1 and 2, the Z50, the Z30, the ZFC. So let's hope that Nikon Z8 comes out soon. Fingers crossed that it's going to be, well, a camera that should exceed the Canon EOS R5 and the Sony a7R5. After all, well, Nikon's had three years to produce a better camera. And with Canon getting ready to release a successor to the R5 sometime later this year or early in 2024, Nikon needs to produce a better camera. Fujifilm makes an appearance in sixth place with the Fujifilm X-T5. This is a follow-up to the X-T4 with a 40 megapixel sensor, but you know, while I was excited about the X-T4, I'm not excited about the X-T5 because my focus is largely in video. And when it comes to video on the X-T5, well, the detail isn't quite there and the rolling shutter is pretty significant. But if you look at all the reviews, while they do concur with what I'm saying, when it comes to the still side of this camera, the X-T5 is absolutely a marvel. A 40 megapixel sensor, it's able to produce really good details, really good results. So if you have the X-T4 and you're a video shooter, I would stay with that. But if you're a still shooter, well then definitely consider the X-T5 as an upgrade. The Nikon ZFC with the 16 to 50 millimeter is Nikon's second camera in the top 10. And the eighth camera in the top 10 is Canon's EOS R10 announced back in May of 2022. It comes bundled with the 18 to 150 image stabilized STM. And the Fujifilm X-H10 makes an appearance in ninth place with 10th place showing up as an APS-C camera and it's our third Sony camera in the list and that's the Sony A6400. Kind of makes us wonder when Sony's gonna announce a new APS-C censored camera or an A60, well, an A6XXX or an A7XXX. Sony's got a bunch of cameras they're gonna be releasing this year and just a few months ago, they registered three cameras. And since then, we've only gotten one camera announcement and that's the ZV. Well, that's a surprising camera. It's basically a ZV version of the Sony a7S III in the ZV E1. So we have two other cameras. Will one of them be the A9 Mark III? Could one of them be an A7XXX or an A6XXX? We'll just have to wait and see. But that concludes another Yodobashi Top 10 camera sales for the past two weeks. And I do get a lot of comments on these videos. Sometimes these videos do very well with over 60,000 views. And sometimes they just, well, crawl along at around 5,000 views. But one thing is always consistent with these videos. They're a snapshot of the Japanese market of the fourth largest Japanese retailer, Yodobashi. But why do I cover them and not, well, a, a camera store in the United States? Well, first of all, this channel is a worldwide channel. I go where the news goes. And one thing that Yodobashi does on a consistent and timely basis is they release their sales figures for the last two weeks, every two weeks. And this gives me something to do on a Sunday. I know that every two weeks I'm going to get some sales data from Yodobashi. B&H, once in a while we do get some information, but they don't do it on a regular basis. And I don't get information from any European retailers, so that's why I'm always covering Yodobashi. So the data that comes from Yodobashi, does that reflect every other camera market? And no, it doesn't. And it's only one retailer, but one thing it does on a Sunday when there's no other camera news out there it gives us a chance to sit back and place bets and guess which camera's in the number one spot, which camera's dominating the top 10, and what surprise entries we have this week. And the two biggest surprises this week is that the Panasonic S5 Mark II is no longer on the list, and that we see the Canon EOS R50. So does that mean the Panasonic S5 Mark II is no longer selling well? No, it doesn't. The big story this week is not actually the Canon EOS R50, or that the Panasonic S5 Mark II isn't on the list. It's that camera manufacturers worldwide are still having problems getting enough units made and shipped out the door. We see Canon's apology list with several cameras and lenses on there. And though we're still in 2023, camera companies are still having trouble meeting the, the demand. And what's really surprising is that we're in, well, a shrinking market. And yet these camera companies still can't get enough cameras out to their customers. If we go back 10 years ago, well, there was a lot more cameras being produced some, what, 12 million a year, 13 million a year compared to what we're seeing today, and yet they can't get the cameras out the door. I never remember having to wait in line or wait in a queue online or otherwise to purchase a camera, but since 2020, that seems to be the story. So that still needs to be fixed before we can get a true representation of what's selling well. 
But that's it for now. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, don't forget to subscribe and choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified so that way you can stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors. Just make sure you check your junk and spam folder because a lot of times those messages come in there. And if you want to stay up to date on all the minor news and rumors, well then don't forget to follow me on my Twitter channel using this address here. For all those news stories that don't quite, well, they're not quite big enough to come up with their own separate video or to have their own separate video, I publish a tweet and that can be as many as 10 a day. It just depends on, well, how much news is coming out for any given day. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll see you again soon.